In the Philippines, tens of thousands are still recovering from last month's devastating typhoon. Many are grappling with the psychological effects of the disaster and the loss of loved ones. Environmental activists say at least 40 survivors have committed suicide. Some argue the tragedy could have been avoided and blame a weak government and environmental destruction as primary factors. FSRN's Madonna Varola reports. A father carries the body of a dead child. A mother hugs her dead baby on the street. Children look for their parents. Dead bodies are everywhere. These are among the photos capturing the devastation of Typhoon Washi, collected by environmental activist Orlando Ravanera. The tragedy did not just stop after December 17, when 1,453 are found dead and about 1,000 more are missing. The pains of the people continues because... There are incidents of suicides. What will they do after they have lost so much already? Their loved ones are not there anymore. For they have committed suicide. Yeah. For survivors like Marisa Katubig, the scenes of the disaster are still vivid. So dark, no, because everybody was sleeping. It was so dark, everybody was sleeping. Waters rushed. We stayed for hours on our roof. This is a first time experience for all. Lining up during the relief operations was dehumanizing. There was no system in our village. The goods were just being thrown at us. In the aftermath of the disaster, many donated aid, including some of the Philippines' poorest citizens, who brought clothing and blankets to survivors. Among international assistants, USAID provided 100,000 U.S. dollars through the Catholic Relief Services for Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene Supplies. But there's growing concern that much of the tragedy and loss of life could have been avoided, says environmentalist Rovanera, who also heads Task Force Makahalar, a coalition of farmers, fisher folks, and indigenous people and women in southern Philippines. Since 1991, we have been staging direct actions against logging and against illegal mining, industrial pollution, uh, all kinds of ecological destructive practices. Because for us then, there is no such thing as legal lagging. Because the remaining forest from in that area, from some 100,000 hec- 100, of hectares uh, three or four decades ago, we barely have uh, two or 3,000 left. No? Ravanera is studying the ecosystems of Mindanao. Members of Congress will use his findings in their investigations. One senator, Aquilino Pimentel III, recently initiated a probe into why the disaster happened. Through these investigations, Ravanera hopes the country will learn a valuable lesson. If only institutions prove to be the vanguard of the environment, and we Filipinos should have been more aware of what has happened, if only the media did its role in exposing all of this, and even if the church has mobilized its own spiritual power to tell the people that protecting God's vanishing creation is really the highest form of worship now. Government and non-government organizations are now conducting stress debriefings among the survivors at the evacuation centers and schools. Nora Villamiranda is a social worker at the government's Department of Social Welfare and Development. Many of those affected are in extreme poverty. If they lose their children, who are their treasure, what would be left for them? If their spouse or relatives are killed, where would they go? The government's assistance has limits. We have to help the survivors tell their stories by listening to them. As hard-hit areas continue to rebuild and activists push for stronger climate and environmental justice policies, some survivors emphasize the importance of mental health services. Thierry Aid, Orlando Ravanera says the country needs more than just material aid. Because I do believe that, yes, uh, a man can live without food for 40 days, without water for 8 days, without air for uh, 8 minutes, but he cannot live even for 3 seconds without hope, without faith, or without love. And so that is, how. what's the reason for living anyway? Everything is lost. We embrace them. We teach them how to sing this time. Uh, a boy was singing impossible dream while, while crying, and so many are crying. So h- how do we now rehabilitate this psychological setback? Madonna Virola, FSRN, Quezon City, the Philippines.